This was the scene one year ago in Halifax. The Brandon Bobcats on top of the CIU basketball world. Champions for the first time. Now in 1988, same city, same storyline. The Bobcats have been powerful to say the least. Leading the way to the final, Patrick Jefferson, who dominated with 21 points and 7 rebounds as Brandon cruised past Western in the semifinal. Standing in the way of a second national championship, a very good team from Wolfville. The Acadia Axemen had their game in high gear against Victoria. Rookie guard Tyrone Carberry, dynamite, pouring in 25 points. But against Brandon, Acadia will need another stellar performance from two-time All-Canadian Peter Morris. presents Canadian Intercollegiate Basketball. Brought to you by OV. It's our beer around here. It'll be Brandon against Acadia from the Metro Center in Halifax for the championship in men's basketball of the CIAU. Hi everybody, Peter Watts with you. and de Delighted you could join us at the Metro Center. This will be the fourth time these two schools have met on the basketball court this year. The first time was back at Waterloo in November in the Naismith Tournament, and Acadia won that game. Since that time, Brandon has won twice, both in overtime, both in Wolfville. Neither team will present a surprise to the other. Both coaches have a lot of work to do to prepare their teams to play this game. We've got to contain their inside game. We've got to do a job on Jevison and Dabney. We've got to do our best to keep Courtney Bailey from running the court on us. And we have to do what we do best, uh, work hard on the offensive and defensive boards. We've got to rebound on both ends. We've got to do a great job on the defensive boards. We've got to go to offensive boards ourselves. We must contain their big scores. Tyrone Carvery had a big game last night. Also, Peter Morris, uh, Kevin Vigneault. We just can't allow those players to have big games tonight. Well, the third coach in this game will be Jack Donahue. He'll be helping me tell the story of this game, Jack. A great matchup, Brandon against Acadia. Two, two very, very well-coached teams, two teams with an awful lot of talent. The difference, I think, and I'm not sure which is going to be the advantage here, Acadia is coming off a great hard win, whereas Brandon really had a sloppy game last night. I don't know whether the rest that they had during the game last night is going to be to their benefit. Well, we'll see, certainly, as this game moves along. I think the story is going to be told inside. If Acadia can bang around with those uh, perhaps a little fragile forwards from Brandon, they've got a good shot to keep this game at least close in the early going. But I think the tone's going to be set by two of the best ball-handling guards in the tournament, Tyrone Carvery and Courtney Bailey. Well, Tyrone Carvery is number 44. He's a 6'1 guard. He's the rookie. I mean, he's the guy that everybody should be saying he's going to panic, and he, how can you get here with a rookie point guard? But I'll tell you, he is a key guy to Acadia. How about Courtney Bailey for Brandon? Well, Courtney Bailey is, is a little different. He's a, a fifth-year uh, player. He's got the experience, and he doesn't penetrate. He doesn't get the points. But I'll tell you what, Dave Nutbrand told me he thinks that's the key matchup. He thinks they can replace other people. He's not sure they can replace him. All right, we're going to watch a great basketball game, Acadia Axman against the Brandon Bobcats for the championship in CIU men's basketball. You'll meet the starting players, and we'll have first-half action from the Metro Center in Halifax in just a moment.
Welcome to the Metro Center in Halifax, the Branded Bobcats against the Acadia Axemen for the championship in CIAU men's basketball. Over 6,000 fans expected to be on hand for this game, a partisan Acadia crowd of course because Wolfville is only about an hour away. And there are the two men who'll be in charge of this game and who may have a lot to say early, Jack. John Wayland of Calgary. The other official will be Don Klein from London. And if they let Acadia play a physical game inside, it could be a big, big factor. A tremendous factor. And if Acadia is not allowed to do a little bumping, put some bodies on some of those bigger players, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, let's now go meet the starting lineup. Here are your starting lineups. First, for the visitors on the scoreboard, the Acadia X-Men under head coach Dave Nutbrown. A six foot seven inch forward from Windsor, Nova Scotia. Number 14, Peter Morris. A six foot six inch forward from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Number 32, Grant McDonald. Five-inch forward from Mahone Bay, Nova Scotia. Number 33, Kevin Lino. A six-foot guard from Blaze Bay, Nova Scotia. Number 43, Charles Igigiani. A six-foot two-inch guard from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Number 44, Tyrone Carberry. Acadia assistant coach is Chuck Gorham. scoreboard the Brandon Bobcats under head coach Jerry Hemmings. A six foot seven inch guard from New Iberia, Louisiana, number double zero, David Dominique. A six foot one inch guard from Toronto, Ontario, number 10, Courtney Bailey. A six foot six inch forward from Toronto, Ontario, number 34, Robert Clark. A six foot eight inch forward from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 40, Whitney Dabney. A six foot five inch forward from Toronto, Ontario, number 44, Pat Jebison. Brandon assistant coaches, Tom Price, Murray McLeod, and Harry Baird. We would now ask that everyone rise and join Barbara Hannigan from C.P. Allen High School in Bedford in the singing of our national anthem. It's going to be pretty hard to duplicate the excitement of the Acadia Victoria game on Saturday evening in this facility. Over 5,700 fans on hand for that one, and it was a terrific basketball game. 86-83, the final score. And the Brandon Bobcats with a little easier time of it. 
against the Western Mustangs who just never really got anything going in their semi-final. 73-65 the final in that for Brandon. And now a big noisy crowd in the Metro Center in Halifax ready to watch the Axemen in red and the Bobcats in the white and gold battle for the National Men's Basketball Championship. Well, you know, Peter, the game, the big factor in the game may not be any one of the players out here. Maybe that sixth man, the 6,000 plus people, very few of whom are impartial in this game. Don Klein throws it up. The Bobcats control the game is underway and Courtney Bailey's got the ball. Bailey drives the baseline and is fouled. First foul of the game, 11 seconds into the contest. Turns the corner, turns the corner. We talked about it, you know, yesterday a lot. You can't let people go along the baseline unless that's your game plan. Doesn't look like anybody was ready for that move. Bailey and David Dominic with the ball now. Two guards, Dominic at 6 7. Whitney Dabney's outside to help out. Good defense here by Acadia. Bailey's got the ball. And here is Robert Clark, who might just be a factor as well from the outside. Robert Clark. I think they're ready, they're ready to let Clark get that shot from the outside. They, they're concerned about him taking the ball to the basket. Great matchup in there, Patrick Jefferson and Peter Morris. They were really going at each other. It'll be something to watch as this game moves along. How much contact is allowed underneath? Acadia with a very physical team likes to play that way. Here's Carvery. Foul is gone. Put him on the top of the head, it looked like. He uh, broke through again. You can't allow those little guys to get through. Here he is, gets him up on his feet. All right, now he gives him a little help. Here, let me give you a little help, Wacko. And hits him a little bit with his elbow as he goes up to take that shot. Just a love tap, though. It's not what we were talking about. The, the smacking that Acadia feels they're going to have to do. A minute and five seconds gone in the opening period, and the score is tied at two. Bailey. Up to Robert Clark, fakes the shot. Whitney Dabney looking inside. And uh, off the rim and crashing the board. The Acadia X-Men control the ball. Carl Zeccagiani from the outside, Vino. It shows you what the enthusiasm can do. I, I don't think that's what Vino wants. I don't think that's what the coach wants. But he gets the opportunity and makes it. Inside, a foul call. It's holding against Peter Morris. I'll tell you, that's the... Here we go. Watch, watch these two guys. Here's two all-Canadian basketball players. Okay, Look at that intensity. Morris. Number 44 is Patrick Jefferson, player of the year. Peter Morris, all-Canadian player and, and a, a national team player. Look at them go at each other. Peter got caught. Now. That's what can't be called. If they call that regularly, Dave Nut Brown's going to have a tough time. Into the corner and back outside. Bailey works it around to Robert Clark. Accepts the return pass. Throws it into the middle. There's Dabney. Dabney with the rebound. Whitney Dabney. Missed box out. They, I mean, that's not Acadia's game. They, they, Dabney had a good shot, didn't make it. Shouldn't have been given that second one. Morris in the backcourt now to help bring the ball up as... Brandon goes to the press early. Carberry up and off the rim. It's controlled though by Vino. And it's rejected. A fine play there by Whitney Dabney, number 40. Dabney, here he goes. Here we go. Let's watch this. Wacko. Goodbye, Charlie. And then, and then on top of it all, the other poor guy gets knocked down. On Acadia to inbounds, but Bailey's got the ball from well outside. It's off the rim, and this time it's controlled by Ikegiani. Not controlled well enough, though, I guess. Didn't get the handle on it. Patience a little bit is what is needed. 
Bailey works against Dickagiani. Outside, rejected. Clark from three point range off the rim. Here's the big problem now. It's just finally it's hauled out and it goes out of bounds. It'll be Brandon basketball. Acadia can't stay in a game if they give it if they give Brandon two or three shots. It must box out. Bailey. Mark inside. Dabney is fouled. Key Dave Nutbrown not happy about any of it. Not happy about the call. And he can't be happy about the box. Call is here. The problem here is whether or not he was getting that shot. And he was. Good call. Good, but he got the ball, but he got a piece of his arm to get the ball. I think the key there was key to whether or not it was a shooting foul. And I, and I think he's trying to make his motion, whether he got the ball up or not before he got whacked. The rule is, if you're prevented from shooting the basketball, whether you got a chance to shoot it or not, it's going to be a two-shot foul. Dabney at 18 and eight assists against Western, held to just eight points and two rebounds against the Carlton Ravens. And he's on the board with a couple of free throws here against the Acadia Axeman. It is 6-4 for Brandon with just over three minutes played in the opening period. Peter Morris and Vino has it back outside. There's Carberry. Every time you see number 44, remember he's a first year player. What a great future he's got in the AUAA. Tyrone Carberry out of Queen Elizabeth Collegiate in Halifax. Huge game on Saturday. 25 points. Morris with a big game himself. Hauled in that loose ball. And Ikagiani sets up the Acadia attack. Morris. And the rebound is taken by Dabney. Here comes Bailey. Clark. Nice pass across the key. Little jump shot. Dabney has two more. Three-quarter court press here now by the Bobcats as Ikagiani gets across center court. Vino way outside, not normally shooting range for him. Katie has got to work the clock down, not give Brandon too much time with the basketball. As the Brandon offense appears to be in high gear. Carvery works against Bailey. A little turnaround jump shot off the rim and the foul is called against Bailey. Key call, key call for Acadia. All right, here we go. We talked about both of these young men earlier. Let's see the play now. He gets himself, gets him up a little bit. Uh, I'll tell you what, tough call. And I, I, I think that uh, Acadia's got to be glad that they made that call because I think it could have been a no call. Charles went right up into him, but... Eight seven, Brandon. Nickagiani at the line for another free throw tie. That could tie the score. Four and a half minutes played in the opening period. The game is tied at eight. Dabney works it to the outside. There is Jebison for his first basket. Well, count the foul is called. Let's take a look. See, this is a key play. Look at the move now. Look at Jebison. Why is he the player of the year? He's got an all Canadian guarding him and an all Canadian fouling him. But Jebison faked high, got, got Peter Morris to commit himself and came back down along the baseline. Problem that. Dave Nut Brown can't have. He can't have five minutes gone in a game and anybody with two fouls, and certainly not Peter Mark. Jebison finishes off the three point play. 11 8 to score, 15 15 to play, first half. Brandon with a three point lead. Jerry Henning's giving him a little what for out there. Carberry. Tries a little jump shot off the rim, controlled by Jebison. And the outlet pass goes to David Dominique. 
Now the Brandon attack really rolling along here. That time they missed from in close, and Ikagiani comes back now for Acadia. Grant McDonald, Vino in the corner. Carberry, a little bit of a zone out there. One, two, two, maybe three, two zone. Nice touch by McDonald. McDonald didn't care which it was. Little turnaround fadeaway jump shot, found the range. The 11 10 in the score. Moves really well with that brace on. You know, it looks like that's a pretty serious situation. Out of bounds on the play. We'll continue with more basketball from the Metro Center in Halifax. It's Brandon 11, Acadia 10. We'd like to thank the following sponsors for their support in hosting the junior basketball event. Cowboys over on this side, they got that double low post. If they go to flash, wit, you got a flash. Now listen, we're going to change up right now. We're going to go to a number one defense. You're on the back, wit in the middle, pad on the back. You guys out front, okay? Well, that's a good fast break for us. When you pick up your dribble, they're, they're getting all over you. So you got to stack up and use good timing to get open. If you have problems, you got to interchange. Okay? Let's go. Let's right, do it right. Come on. One, two, three. Deep yeah. 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 Once it uh, a little bit of control on that fast break. Look at that group. Yeah. Paul Bunyan, is that who that's supposed to be? Look at who? That's the X-Man. Oh, my Lord. Look at this. Changing his defense a little bit. Let's just get a look. See what that change is going to be the next time that Acadia gets the ball. Brandon's changing to what they call their number one defense. David Dominic. Yeah, Bailey checked McDonald up covering him. Dabney's been a big force so far in the early going. Number 40. He's got the ball once again. Went up over McDonald and got the two points. Let's see now. This is their number one defense. It looks like a trapping up the sideline. They're backing off, backing off, trying to get you to come up this sideline and got away. It looks like a very, a 2-2-1 two -two press trying to get you up along the sideline and double up on the ball. Woo! Ekajiani called on the travel. It'll be Brandon basketball on the turnover. 13.44 to go in the first half. He put somebody up in the air with that fake before he walked. I think he was just as scared as I was when I saw that guy go up. Hickagiani comes out and Wayne Taylor, a rookie from Toronto, the AUAA Rookie of the Year. Number 12 for Acadia checks in. Did you look at Don Klein? From London, Ontario, the official in charge of this game, along with John Whelan of Calgary. And probably the two best officials, or two of the best officials in the tournament, get the honor of doing this game. Whelan did last year's national final. These, these are two excellent officials. Inside again, Dabney's been a huge factor in this game in the first six minutes of play. He's got ten points. And good defense that time by Bailey as he kicked the ball like a soccer player into the end seats. Well, that's, that's what they're trying to do, is get you to put the ball on the floor, up a sideline, and double up, and then try and jump in front of everybody else. Let's see if they got it. There's that. They're still playing straight, and if you can get it past that first line, you're going to get some pretty good shots. There's one of them. Carberry inside, can't get to it. And the foul is called against Grant McDonald. Well, you know, that's, that's one of the keys that Jerry... Jerry Hemmings feels in that basketball game is that he felt referees have got to call some over the back uh, implying of course that Acadia is going to come running at the basket even if they are boxed out this Jerry Hemmings a little pat on the back to Patrick Acadia, Acadia calls its first time out with 13 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first half and we will take a break as well you're watching the CIU National Men's Championship from the Metro Center in Halifax the Bobcats lead Acadia by five. We're into the game. We've got to get our sleep set on where we are. We've got to get into our press break. 
Now, if you see him with the ball in the middle of the back, get into the middle of the court. All right, we can't have the middle field. When you swing back, look to the middle first, not around the perimeter. When we get it square, and if we get a chance, to attack the basket. Now, fellas, we're in terrible foul shape. We haven't played seven minutes, and we haven't played very smart. All right, now let's get our game together and play with some intelligence now for the next little while. Granny, you can't pick up another one. I want your back baseline side now, not fronting them. And if they love, you're in the weak side, you're the help man. You've got the help man with Dabney down there. All right? Okay, come on, let's go. Come on, Todd. Come on, Todd. Good. I, I think Nut Brown felt he needed the timeout. Uh, as he said, they haven't played well for seven minutes. They're only down five, so they're in, in pretty decent shape. About the press, he was right, reminding them that after the ball gets reversed, or before the ball gets reversed, must go to the middle. The middle is what will beat this pressing defense. Rebounding once again, the ball hauled down this time by Brandon's Marvin Russell, number 24, is in the ball game as well. Bailey works to the corner to Russell back outside. Trying to get some help in there. Wojarski can't get to it. Acadia manages to save it briefly, and Brandon's got the ball again. There's Bailey out there with the ball under his arm. The mailman. He's in there to make it deliver the ball. Good help inside from the weak side. The side away from the ball is coming down in and helps it with the pivot man. Bailey inside. There's Dabney once again. Whitney, Dabney. They haven't been able to stop him, Jack. That ball's Not got in there about four times, and Dabney scored every time. He has, and the, and the problem, of course, is that they're not getting quick enough help from the weak side. They're half fronting him, but you got to get somebody behind him. Vino up through traffic. There's the rebound that time. And Brandon hits the score sheet with Ted Byrne, number 30. Getting the job done inside. Brandon has done a good job defensively boxing out as well. There has not been a lot of opportunity for Acadia to get the ball under the hoop. No, it's a oh, tough play. Very good movement by uh, the whole uh, Brandon club. They just really moved it and moved until they got the defense in a bad situation foul, dropped it right under the basket. Yeah. You can see now they want to throw that ball in, but look at the great position he has and where he gets the ball. Now the, the defense has come in and try to double up, but uh, not in time. And, and there's no way they can allow that ball to go there. That was like a two-foot shot. Well, they put Morris back in the ball game. Ted Byrne was in there briefly and is still on the floor guarding Dabney. Mr. Dabney, obviously at 6 8, has been more of a factor in this game than either one of those players would have liked. That's right. It's, uh, it's good to see Morris back in there because it's, uh, Katie cannot afford to play long with him out of the game. This time, Dabney misses. The rebound controlled by Acadia. And Carvery quickly to the attack. Green one. Well, I'll tell you, he's ready to play. Nine minutes gone in the first half. It's a five-point game. Brandon, 19. Acadia, 14. And Morris gets the turnover. That time they denied Dabney the ball. From the corner, Carberry. Carberry's got eight points. Timeout call. A little more intelligent play by the Kitty Axman. And Brandon's Jerry Hemmings wants the timeout. Brandon, 19, Acadia 16. The atmosphere heating up at the Metro Center. Stay with us.
No, you take Morris. Frankie, you're out. You're going to have to go at 30. Good job. Go at 30. Let's go. 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 let us and Jerry Hemmings is saying, guys, number 44 is going to kill us if we keep giving him the basketball. I knew what I liked about Hemmings. He can't speak English either. <laughs> There's Jemison, a little turnaround and jump shot. Jemison. Lovely touch by this young man, number 44, for the Brandon Bobcats. And it'll be Acadia Ball despite the Boy, best did. efforts of Courtney <laughs> Bailey. He Bailey really tried to get that one. He yelled at him, he wanted to beg them. Notice how Peter Morris takes the ball in. He's got to guard their best player. Oh, boy. There's Carberry. And he couldn't make the shot, but he got the loose ball back outside. Carberry again. Nine forty-five to play. Twenty-one eighteen. Brandon inside to Jebison, outside to Clark. Rebound to Acadia. Ted Burn. Harris Vino saving one and keeping it inbound. Burn gives it to Peter Morris. Now it's Wayne Taylor working against Bailey. Five seconds on the shot clock. Here's Taylor shooting. Way short. That time the rebound controlled by Bojarski. And Bailey brings it back down the floor for, for Brandon. Bailey to Dominique. Bailey, three point range. Bailey saved it, threw it back inbounds on the turnover. Here comes Tyrone Carberry. Oh, knocked it. He went right through them. He's on some kind of roll, this young man. Well, Anywhere you. on the floor, he's firing it. Here he comes, pump, get up. And, and he caused a foul. Now, I'm, I wonder if he just concentrated a little bit more on the shot. Because here I am talking about a guy that's hit three or four in a row. But if he concentrated more on the shot, he seemed to really be concerned about getting fouled on that. Not, not, not worried about it, but trying to put an awful lot of effort into making sure he got fouled. Right right. Made it pay off. Dabney checks back into the Brandon lineup. Frank Bajarski on his way to the bench. carvery has got a dozen. We haven't played 12 minutes yet. If he can average a point a minute in this game, I'm sure Dave Nutbrown would think his team's got a good shot. Well, I'd be concerned with Dave Nutbrown right now, and, and that'd be Peter Morris. That, that matchup, I think it's the best matchup, is Morris and, and uh, Patrick Jefferson. But Morris has got two already. If he gets his third, they're going to be a major problem. That time, Carberry drew the foul. Dave right. Nutbrown. Screams instructions from wow. 50 or 60 feet away. Tell him, play defense with your feet. Keep your hands to yourself. There's no need for the foul. And, uh, but it's, it's easier for you and I to do it here. It's even easier for Dave Nutbrown to tell him how to do it. Dominic from New Iberia, Louisiana. And it hurts because he's making into the foul. First points of the afternoon for David Dominic. Peter Morris taking a ball in bounds. On the floor, Wright's got it. Cross to Peter Morris. Morris. Peter Morris. Two-time All-Canadian playing his final collegiate basketball game. Peter Morris playing defense and gets the rebound. A great play by Wayne Taylor to knock that loose ball away. Taylor's got it now. 
There's Carberry. Back out to Taylor. That block made a few things happen. It, it made sure that Brandon couldn't get into that press, which they've been feeling pretty good about. Dabney, Bailey, inside Jemison, throws it out. Dominique cannot get a shot. Neither can Bailey. That time he got a shot. Can't let that clock go down and then let somebody penetrate. Now that's exactly what Dutt Brown wants him to do, is get that ball in the center of the court, which is where the weakness in this particular defense is. From the outside. <laughs> Two-pointer for Wayne Taylor. 26-25, Acadia's got the lead for the first time in the game. 6.50 to go in the first half. Dominic finds a free trip to the basket and lays it in. David Dominic. Once he gets that baseline, you got to remember one of the people back there to help out is Peter Morris, who's already got two and realizes he just can't afford to get a third foul. And yet he's guarding perhaps their most dangerous player in Jefferson. Here's our friend again, number 44, Mr. Carberry. That time he missed a little bit. And Bailey comes back for Brandon. Bailey off the rim. That time, Vino got the rebound. And now here is Wayne Taylor. Dave Nutbrod was very really impressed with the game that he played against Victoria. He took some of the pressure off Carberry. And if he can get his shooting game going a little bit on this occasion, in this game, he can do even more to make Carberry a factor simply by being an effective decoy. There he is again. Oh! 28-27, Acadia. Game's on now, Jack. Well, I'll tell you what, it's red hot out there. Clark, way across the court to Dominique. Inside, knocked away, burn. There's that help we were talking about. Wasn't a player that's guarding in there, it's the help coming from one of the corners. Taylor. Watch the banging and crashing inside, and that time they threw the ball in and turned it over. Good defense by Brandon. Five minutes to play in the first half. Clark from the outside, works against Carberry. In they go to Dabney. Oh, jump right up. Morris. And they get it up very quickly to Kevin Vino. And now Carberry to the corner and Taylor takes the look. Got the ball out in the middle where they want it. Now here's a great drive by Morris and he just missed and Dominic called in the rebound and starts back for the Bobcats. Go. Mr. Bailey with the basketball. Oh. Well, that's what you got to be worried about. Not enough help, not in time. Acadia just has not been able to stop that play. And now they get the turnover with Dominic hauling it in right at the line and in the middle of the floor. And it comes outside to Bailey. Jebison has it stolen away by Wayne Taylor. This time, Vino under the basket goes up and is fouled. Three fifty-one to play in the first half from the Metro Center in Halifax. It's Brandon 31, Acadia 28. Dave Gogan, David Oikel. Come down to the scores table at 
the end of the first half to participate in the fan shootout. Welcome back to the Metro Center in Halifax. Peter Watson, Jack Donahue with you. Three minutes and 51 seconds to play in the first half. It's Acadia 31. Uh, sorry, Brandon 31, Acadia 28. You are in the Acadia huddle with Dave Metbrown. Okay. We've got to get ourselves settled again. Okay. All right, keep okay. running. Not for sure. Come on, come on. Come on now. Whoa, oh, guys, come on. Now you're in the Brandon huddle. Okay. Yeah. 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 Get up when the crowd gets into the wave. Missed on the rebound. Frank Pajarski hauled in the loose ball. David Dominic will take it over. Dominic to Pajarski. He's away outside. Throws it into the middle. And Dabney does a terrific job to lay that in for two. He's got 20 points. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Outside gives it to Wayne Taylor. Ted Burns. Vino looks inside, and the foul is called against Marvin Russell of the Brandon Bobcats. Brandon foul, Marvin Russell, his first team foul number five. Kevin Vino in line, shooting two. Converts the free throw opportunity. We've got a two point game. Brandon 33, Acadia 31. Just a little bit more than three minutes to go in the first half. Dominic drives and fires, oh. scores. Great drive to the basket by double zero. From the Acadia standpoint, have to be a little concerned about the defense. Long pass across court gets to Peter Morris. Got to be concerned too. Bailey's out. They should really not have a solid ball handler in there, and yet they're not only playing, even if they picked up a point or two with Bailey out. Outside, off the rim. There's Bojarski with the rebound. Dominic. To Patrick Jemison. There's Bird or Dabney inside once again, and he's fouled. This time by Vino. There's that help coming in, number 20 coming in, trying to give it, gets over the, the defensive player, he gets it, here's help again coming in from the other side, neither one of them are helping it enough. 33 came in, too late, Peter Morris was trying to front, not good enough. 21 for Dabney in the game. Great pass inside by Jebison, whose game has really matured this year. He was an All-Canadian Honorable Mention last season. This year, he's the Player of the Year, number 44. And meanwhile, Wayne Taylor works to the corner. Danny Steele, and a foul away from the basket. This one against Frank Kujarski. Well, he stepped in, uh, trying, to, trying to get better position, and, and just stepped in front, and he, and he pushed him as he came around. Good defensive play, but... Just a little too much pushing. Carvery and Grant McDonald check back into the lineup. They were out for a breather. 2.08 to go. It's a five point Brandon lead. 36 31 the score. Ready to inbound. This will be Acadia basketball with Carvery to put it in play. 
Out to Vino, and they move it to the outside to Taylor to Morris. Now, here's Carberry, finding a little seam and finding the rain. Carberry. Any way you want it. Outside, takes it to the basket, jumps up over people and makes it. Carberry has 14 points. Got a 2-3 zone coming out of Acadia. See if they can slow things down a little bit this way. Work to the corner. Here's Bojarski and Jebison underneath the basket. And this time the ball is knocked away and it's controlled by Carberry of Acadia. Way outside, Taylor off the rim. Dominic controls for Brandon. Ace is picked up just a little bit here. Everybody's matched up. Let's see if they're going to play zone. It looks like it's zone again. Jebison inside lays Jebison. it in. Jebison has seven. Taylor. Works against Marvin Russell. Morris outside now. Jebison's keeping an eye on him. And the shot goes in. And the foul is a player control foul, I think, against oh. Peter Morris. So the basket won't count. Yeah, let, it's, that's a key. If that's, here it is. Here's Morris with the basketball. He's got his elbows up, moving. Yeah, sure, they got him. They got him. He pushed off, Peter. And that's a key foul. I just written down for my halftime comment how, how lucky uh, Acadia was to keep Morris out of that third foul. That's a tough time and a good call. So we can expect an update at the half, can we? Well, an comment? update, well, that kind of, yeah, it's a, uh, he's a key man and he makes an awful lot of things happen. When he's out there, you can lean on Carvery and a couple other people. Here's Jebison, Pat, lovely Jebison. touch. He has nine points. He's the same, oh my God. That's what happens with the press. It's not so much the times the press steals the ball, it's a time that gets you to get sloppy and panicky and throw it away like that. So Brandon gets the ball. Dave Nutbrown looks on. He's concerned. Thinking about a timeout, and I guess he decided it's not worth it right now. 25 seconds. And the idea is they've got the ball no matter what happens, how much damage. And if they hold the ball, then, then Dave Nutbrown gets right, and he did. 18 left on the clock in the first half. Bailey and Dominique will just play catch. Bailey might just set it up here for Dominic, and they'll take one shot at the basket as the clock runs down. Here's Bailey. Oh, nice move to get by Carvery off the rim, and the horn sounds, and the first half has come to a close, and it's a seven-point game with Brandon in the lead. Well, your thoughts? Well, I think that I think that uh, Katie's really in trouble right now with uh, Peter Morris out of there. They're going to have to come back very, very tough. Uh, Brandon's grabbed hold of the game, and uh, they seem to be in control. All right, Jack, 20 minutes of basketball has been played at the Metro Center in Halifax. And we go to the half with the score, Brandon 40, Acadia 33. David Gogan to come down to participate in the fan shootout and a chance to win two tickets anywhere in the Maritimes Air Atlantic Fly. The opening presentation of the evening. Okay. Yep. Not bad. Gordo, you're real hot. Can you turn it down? Not 
Not bad. Gordo, you're real hot. Can you turn it down? Use your credit card to order your set. Call toll-free 1-800-268-1121 and tell us which channel you're watching. That's 1-800-268-1121. The thrills and excitement of NBA basketball is on TSN. Tension from division rivals and top teams on television's best basketball schedule keeps you at the hoop. Tuesdays and Fridays, TSN takes you courtside for action only the NBA provides. Run with the best and follow the leading teams all the way to a world championship. Time score from the Metro Center at Halifax. The Brandon Bobcats trying to win their second straight national title lead the Acadiacs men by seven points at 40 to 33. This has been a terrific tournament this week. It will make money for the first time since it was moved here five years ago. The fun started Thursday night at the Halifax Sheraton with the individual award ceremonies. The opening presentation of the evening was to the 10 All-Canadians. The first team led by Brandon's multi-talented forward Patrick Jebison. Joining him on the podium, Byron Tokarczuk of Saskatchewan with his fourth All-Canadian nomination. Sophomore sensation John Stiefelmeyer from Western. Acadia's 6'7 forward Peter Morris. And the country's top shooter, Fred Morrell from the University of Toronto Blues. On the second team, last year's Mike Moser Award winner, Chris Beagler of Regina. UBC 6'5 guard J.D. Jackson. Acadia forward Kevin Vino. Fifth-year man Rob Fries from Waterloo. Manitoba Bison guard Terry Garrow. A new twist to the national awards was the inaugural presentation to the CIU's freshman of the year. The first winner, 6'8 center Rick Stanley from the University of Alberta. Stanley made a smooth transition from high school to university play. It wasn't too bad. Uh, this summer I played in the uh, Alberta team in the Junior Nationals in Lethbridge and it was kind of a gradual step up. Instead of making the big jump from high school to university, I kind of went through it slowly so it wasn't too bad it took a little while to get used to the first couple months were a little shaky but uh, once this started going it was right I was right in the groove the Stu Aberdeen trophy goes to the CIAU coach of the year Acadia Axman boss Dave Nutbrown who guided his team to an impressive 27 and 5 record took the honor I think that's the most important part. You're recognized by your peers. It's the, the people you coach against, you work against, and you work with all year. And I'm um, certainly proud, but at this point, I, I don't think you really appreciate it as much right now as I might a month from now or three weeks from now. I think we're a little more concerned about what we have to do for the next three days. And I'm sure after that that I, I'll, uh, I'll really have uh, uh, some, a lot more thought and a lot more, uh, it'll, it'll hit me a lot more than maybe it has right now. Certainly the top prize of the evening, the Mike Moser Award to the most valuable player in Canadian University basketball. That honor went to Brandon Center Patrick Jebison, who averaged 19 points a game and six rebounds per game. I think you can contribute a lot more to your team when you do score, say, 16, 19 points, block shots, rebound, you know, and play good defense. I, yeah, I do. So a terrific evening at the Halifax Sheridan Thursday night. Some great honors handed out. Another big honor still to be handed out. It's the main prize for winning the national championship. Will it go to Acadia or will it go to Brandon? The next 20 minutes will tell the story. Right now, Brandon with a seven-point lead. And we'll take a break and continue with more action from the Metro Center in Halifax after this. Acadia 33 at halftime from the Metro Center in Halifax. Welcome back to basketball action. Peter Watson, Jack Donahue with you. The coach has had his telestrator busy in the intermission trying to pick out some highlights. And certainly the matchups inside have been part of the key story. And Brandon is winning most of those matchups right now. Jack. Unfortunately for Acadia, you, you saw it during your show on the, uh, the dinner. Uh, you can see Peter Morris eyeing Jebison there. Here we go here. Here's, here's Peter Morris right down in here. Going to try and get good position on this. Let's watch what happens with the ball as the ball moves around. Ball goes, swings out. Let's watch it. Hold it right here. Notice Peter's starting to work his way around. He's going to end up in front of him. Very, very good defense. Let's see what happens out of it. Ball goes to the top. 
Peter pivots back. We can't see him, but he turns to the ball, makes the steal. Very important. That's one of them that he's won. He hasn't lost that many of them in here, but the one one that he lost, one that he lost is a really important thing. I, the key, I think, is that Peter means so much to them. Rebounds, passes the ball, and our son of a gun, he can't afford to make these fouls. And let's look what happens here. Jebison gets him down in this situation here. Jebison gets him in, an, uh, in a very, very awkward situation. As the ball moves around, let's move this forward and let's see the ball move around. Here we go. As the ball moves out here, let's hold on to it. Peter does not get in time. Let's, let's watch. Hold it right there. He's going to fake out here and come along the bottom, and Peter doesn't make the move with him. Watch Peter's feet as they make that fake. Here's Jefferson out. Peter makes the move. They catch him in here. Now Peter is, should be coming straight through. Instead, he gets behind him. That's his second foul. He gets his third not too much later. Well, he's got three fouls, and that presents real problems because Whitney Dabney's got 21 points, and they have not been able to stop the ball going inside to number 40. Well, it's tough to stop it because Whitney Dabney wants that ball. Here's the ball coming down here. We'll see as it moves down. We'll move the ball down further, and as it comes down, let's move that ball down. Ball goes into the corner, and we hold it right here. Watch Dabney seal his man. He is going to pin himself there, gives himself plenty of room along the baseline. Let's watch the pass in ball goes in how are you going to stop him hold it right there see the weak side help that guy's got to get there earlier so that they can't get it into Dabney super all right Jack it's 40 to 33 the Brandon Bobcats lead the Acadia X-Men by seven 20 minutes of basketball still to be played here at the Metro Center in Halifax and we'll get this the action started in just a moment Dabney, as you look at some statistics from the first half, the big story, the fact that uh, Acadia's forwards have three fouls for Morris and two each for McDonald and Vino, and those three players offensively have combined for just nine points out of the 33, so really the story to be told by the Acadia forwards, they need to stay out of further foul damage, and they need to pick up some pace a little bit on the offense, because Carvery's got 14, and he can't continue to carry the entire scoring load for the Axemen. No, they've got to get some help from the inside. Uh, Dave Nutbrow's got his jacket off, which is the first time I've seen him, you know, get that worried about things. They've got the ball in. Peter Morris is in the game. Three fouls. Keep an eye on him. Nick Gianni outside to Morris. Dominic moves out to watch him. Here's Carvery inside. Morris on the attack early. Peter Morris. And he gets his fourth point of the game. One. 2-2 zone by Brandon, and uh, Katie will, will attack it from the sides. 
looking to give the ball to Morris there or give it to him on the wing to shoot it. Inside, Dabney lays it in. He's got 23. That's the highlight we had at halftime, just getting that ball into him. They, he seals people along there and gets the ball along the baseline. Vino crosses center court, under pressure, gets the ball into Ikegiani. And it's stolen away. Nice play by Marvin Russell. And the Axemen have to play some defense. From the outside, another good shot there by Dominic. There's that press again. Trying to get that ball up and, and, and attack you along that sideline. Here you go. Right again, not trying to handle it pretty well, but they've got to get it out of there, out of the corners. Dino. McDonald. And a foul away from the basket by Whitney Dabney. Two on Dabney, his first of the half, and Brandon's first team foul of this second period. There's McDonald up and over, and McDonald got the loose ball outside to Ikegiani. Now Vino will try his luck. Ikegiani to Morris. Heavy traffic, Morris. Morris not going to make many mistakes in there. Two-time All-Canadian performer starting to find the range offensively. 44 to 37, Brandon leads. Bailey, cross court. Dominic has to throw it back outside. Jebison to Marvin Russell. Long pass across the court. Dominic drains it for three. Three seconds on the clock also. That's what that's when it really hurts. They played very good defense, Acadia. And then Brandon, uh, a tribute to Brandon. Brandon comes right in with a three-point that wild. Get the ball over center court. Ikegiani takes over now for the Acadia Axeman. Here's Carvery. He turns it over once again. Bailey. Brandon's won this game to this point on defense as much as anything else. Dabney has been red hot on offensively, but they have played very well when they don't have the basketball. McDonald that time with a good defensive rebound. Here comes Ikegiani driving the lane and firing. Well, you're right, Peter, about the defense because between the press and this changing into a 1-2-2 zone here, they must have had 3-4 turnover. That turns the corner again. Can't let him get turn that corner. She, now, see, now we're going for a block, but it's a little bit late. They, they may block it, but they've given him enough shoves so that the referee's got to call a foul. Ikegiani at the line, out of Glace Bay, Nova Scotia, up in the Cape Breton area. One for two from the free throw line on this occasion. 47-38, Acadia has to be careful that the Bobcats don't get too big a lead. There's Dominic, outside to Bailey. Jemison to the corner. Dominic throws it back outside. They will work the clock down and wait until the last possible moment before trying a shot. Here's Dominic from well out. And the rebound is taken by Carvery. Double team gets it inside. Knocked out of bounds. Off Brandon. It'll be Acadia ball. Robert Clark checking into the lineup for the Bobcats, number 34. And Russell goes to the sidelines. Inside, nice move, Grant McDonald. Excellent. That, that's about three baskets that Acadia's gotten out of their, uh, their uh, out of bounds play underneath. Three layups in this tournament. Bailey to the corner, Dominic. Inside, a foul is called. It's Offense. against Robert Clark. It's against uh, Dabney, number 40. It's one of the problems. If you're being fronted and you're a little too aggressive, you end up getting half the foul. Now, all of a sudden, Mr. Dabney's got three fouls against him. 
Jarski's getting ready to check back in for Brandon. Meanwhile, Carberry is trying to make something happen offensively. Brandon in a little bit of a matchup zone. Ikagiani tries from the outside. Whoever that offside guard is, be it Ikagiani or Wayne Taylor, has got to make some things happen offensively because Carberry is drawing extra attention from the Brandon defense. Robert Clark from the outside. Oh, he's been absolutely red hot from that spot on the floor for three games. Again, Morris involved in the, in the ball handling. Takes a lot out of him also. Morris from the outside. And the rebound is controlled by Whitney Dabney to Dominique. Dominic penetrates, throws it back out to Jebison. That's, uh, that's a play that Jebison made, but uh, Dominic sets it up by penetrating enough. Dino sets it up for Ikegiani to Morris. Looking inside, McDonald. Under pressure, threw it up, and a foul is called. And it's against Dino. Reached over, I think, uh, at poor position. Probably annoyed about the way it was a pretty sloppy set. Time out on the floor. 14.48 to play in the second half. It's 52-42. Brandon leads by 10. Eighteen hours between the, you know, two most important games of this season, and uh, we heard him. He, he wants to make sure that Peter Morris sees that ball a lot more. On the turnover, here comes Ikagiani, and just like that, it's knocked away by David Dominic. Carberry leaves it for Ikagiani to Peter Morris. Acadia forward starting to be a little bit more of a factor offensively, but what was a seven-point Brandon lead at the half has now come to be ten. Carberry has been taken out of the Brandon shooting attack. Now they get it inside to Morris. That's the way to coach Truett. Told him what to do. Morris got a high post. If he doesn't get it, slash down. Robert Clark. Long cross-court pass. Here's Bailey from the outside. Jebison got the rebound. Clark from a way outside. This time the rebound goes to Grant McDonald. On the scramble, it's controlled on a fine play by McDonald. He played it off Morris's back and went and got the loose ball. Here's Carberry. Tough pass. He plays a whole lot bigger than six foot two. I'll tell you. Dominic to the corner. Robert Clark back outside to Frank Pajarski. And the ball is turned over again. Good team defense by Acadia. Here's Carberry and has to get it back outside. Takes it back. Uncontested. Up the rim. Here's the rebound to McDonald. There's that sixth man. That crowd is going crazy. I tell you, Acadia put it together. Timeout, Brandon. Point difference with 
12.40 to play. We'll be back to the Metro Center. Stay with us. Look at this, I can't believe. Look at this, he turns the corner, blows right past people as if they're standing still, and they're not. And, and Acadia plays some good defense, but not that play. Fifty-four, fifty-one. Carvery made the free throw. The 11 and a half minutes to play. The intensity level in this building is heating up fast. Here's Bojarski from the outside. Frank Bojarski. You see what happens there, Peter, is they, they've got to worry about Jebison inside. Got to worry about them inside. So the gun, they're getting open shots. At the other end, Carberry missed. The foul is called. It's against Vino. Vino has four. Ted Byrne checks in. Vino goes to the bench. And the two coaches stroll and worry. Tough decision right now to take out Vino. But I, I, I guess uh, Dave Nutbrown has got to figure that he's still got a chance in the game. And he could, he's better take him out and not let him get his fit. Uh, sometimes you got to leave a guy in. You think the game's getting out of hand. Taylor underneath. Here's McDonald. To a fast break, we've seen Acadia run in three games, but they got the ball down the floor in a hurry and they got the two points. Dabney screaming at the official that McDonald's playing too tough against him. Dabney trying to get the loose ball, does, knocks it out of bounds. It's Brandon Ball. 6,000 people don't like it. One guy made the decision, he's going to win the argument. I didn't think it was that close. <laughs> you know. But I guess you begin to doubt yourself at 6,000. Oh, yeah. What a great pass and a lovely touch by Jemison on the pass from Bailey. Morris up to Wayne Taylor to Ted Byrne. Taylor now will set it up. Oh, 
Knocked away by Robert Clark. McDonald has to play defense. And the foul is called against McDonald. Bad matchup there. I mean, poor McDonald got stuck out there with Clark. And in the open court, Clark is just going to blow by him. Salvino has four. Morris has three. McDonald now has three. Those are the three big Acadia forwards. And Acadia calls timeout. And Dave Cut Brown on strategy at the Acadia event. Now we get on the block, and nobody will scream on the block. You stay there. As soon as you get it, you don't have to go block the block. We're probably going to block the block down the screen this half. Will you guys for the block to keep moving? Keep out. Now we have to we get in line. Our problem is, all you're doing is watching the ball. Don't lose sight of your man. Get heavy to the ball side, but don't ever take your eyes off your man. Alright? Alright. We got to get another one. We got one going. Alright, we'll get back in. We can't be stripped. We have to get in an offense and get a good shot. We got to get the ball inside. We got to have movement off the block and bounce it. And we've got to have some entries now. Okay? Let's run right hand next time down the floor. At half, it was a seven point game. We are exactly halfway through the second period. It is still a seven point game. Vito has four. Morris and McDonald have three. The three starting forwards from Acadia have to be careful. On the bracket side, Dabney, who has 21, 23 points in the game, 21 of them in the first half, has three fouls. Robert Clark missed on the first try. Sixty-one fifty-three. Eight-point margin. Brandon has it. And now Wayne Taylor goes to work for Acadia. Burn. Can't get it inside, so Morris tries from well out. Great job rebounding there initially by Acadia. It's Acadia basketball that went out of bounds off of Brandon Flair. Brandon lucky then. Peter Marsh not going to miss many of those shots. Ted Byrne looking to make a pass. Does finally to Wayne Taylor. Out to McDonald. Brandon playing tough defense. Here's Morris working against Jemison. Inside, Byrne lays it in, but the foul is called against the Mike Closer Award winner, Patrick Jemison. Good, good matchup here. Look at this. Two of the great players in Canada. Morris is trying to get the ball in. Actually, Morris, Morris picks up the foul. He, he went over Patrick's leg, and Patrick had a grab at him with his arm. Uh, not much Patrick could do about it. Should have backed up, but it's a lot easier talking about it after the fact. Carberry to put it in play. Taylor. Back to Carberry. A blocking call against David Dominic. Very, very tough call. Let's get a look at it. Boy, I tell you, it, it, it's a matter of whether or not he had both feet planted. Because he did hit him in the chest. But I tell you, we got two great officials out there. If they're going to call out a, a, a block, I think I'm going to have to live with it. It's amazing to me how your perspective changes when you're on the broadcast side as opposed to the coaching bench. I, I don't have a prejudicial view when I'm standing here. I don't think Jerry Hemmings would ever be convinced that that was a good call. Carberry. Five ball, you can't do it. All right. It's a turnover. Carberry couldn't put it in play in the allotted time. Great defense by the Brandon Bobcats. Now Bailey brings the ball back down the floor. Not not nine, 10 to go in the second half. Eight point game with Brandon leading 61-53. Inside on turnover. Tough, tough defense by Ted Byrne. Here's Carberry. And that time, great block shot by Jemison. He 
He's not just a good shooter, he can play defense. I'll tell you, that's not defense. I mean, that's anti anti shooting. That's all it should be illegal. Crashing the boards, and the foul is called against Jefferson. See, that's one of the five. I mean, Jefferson made such a great play earlier to block that shot. But if you go up there looking for that ball all the time, a little bit of a hesitation, a little mistake on your part, you end up with a foul. And that, that doesn't Grand help him. Pat Jefferson is third, team foul number seven. Brandon over so the with eight minutes and 50 back. seconds to go, Brandon is over the foul limit. And that means something that you talked about during the semifinals. Arcadia now with a chance to score with a clock stop. And they're pretty good, eight minutes, eight, almost nine minutes seven points what you're always talking about is is really minutes and baskets so uh, i mean 12 14 points you could still survive with an eight minute eight minute mark they're only down six is it now seven 61 54. bailey against taylor here's robert clark back outside dabney gets it into jefferson and the blocking call is against Peter Morris, his fourth. They've got a... Uh, uh, Arcadia uh, foul, Peter Morris, his fourth. So we have a timeout on the floor with eight minutes and 36 seconds to play. It is Brandon, 61, and Acadia, 55. Obvious that Brandon's going to go after Peter Morris and try and entice him into a fifth foul. I, I'm not sure the way they play. I'm not sure they've got to do much more than just run their offense. What I think's got to happen is Jefferson's got to stay out of the backcourt. I don't. I don't think uh, Morris is going to foul him back there, but he may have to foul him inside. Let's see if we get if we have the same matchups. Let's see. You know, they've got Morris off Jefferson. I don't think they can afford to play. Can't afford to lose Morris with eight minutes still to play. Marvin Russell's got the ball. Morris is keeping an eye on him. Clark now from the outside and reaching in. Jebison manages to get the basket. You want the best player in the country to play like the best player in the country in the national championship game. And while Dabney has been very quiet in the second half after getting 21 in the first half, Jebison has helped to pick up the slack. And he's done it well at both ends of the court. There's a rebound and an offensive basket by Grant McDonald. 63-57, six-point game. Brandon wins the lead. Only once has Acadia had an advantage in this game. And that was early in the half. And now Don Klein blows the whistle. And I think he's wondering why the 30-second clock didn't move. Klein and Whelan at the bench. They may decide to run some time off this. They have. The story in numbers. Always a problem when, when there's a, uh, a malfunction of any kind of a timing instrument because, you know, every, right now Jerry Hemmings would like that uh, not, not so low. And not low. They've run the shot clock down to 20 seconds. And that's how much time Brandon will have to make a shot. Bailey, way outside now. Works it to Dominique. He finds the lane and is fouled as he tried to shoot. And this time it's charged against Vino. Oh, sorry, Ted Burns, number 30. 
You know, you notice how, see, Peter Morris can't play tough defense. He's got four. That's what sets up the whole play. Everybody is trying to now make up for Peter, who had to back off a little bit. I mean, the importance of that fourth foul is, uh, can't be underestimated. Dominic now with an even dozen points. But Dominic really handles the ball. Well. When Bailey was out, he was a point guard. And at six foot seven, you wouldn't expect that. Dominic has 13. It's 65 57, an eight point game. Brandon with the lead. 7 20 to go. Carberry drops it all the more. Carberry has 21 points in the game. There's Clark in the corner. Back out to Bailey. Dabney with his hands up under the basket, ready to get the pass. Grant McDonald trying to deny him the ball. Dominic from well out. And it goes to Jemison. Run the clock down again. No, they don't. They take the shot. And a big battle underneath. And it's against Jemison. Differences with the seven six point lead, uh, Brandon can afford to take out Patrick and sit him for a little bit, give him a little bit of rest because usually the fourth and fifth come very close together. And second and third, fourth and fifth come very, very close together. So you're usually trying to take a little break in there somehow. Jebison on the bench. Bojarski in the ball game. Ted Byrne strikes from the free throw line. 65-60. Brandon by five. 65 60, it remains. 640 to play in regulation time. Great box out down there by Brandon. I mean, they just cleared away that whole basket area. There's the ball inside to Dabney, and the foul is called. Very basic pass and cut to the basket offense right now. Uh, Brandon does it very, very well. You can see him now. He's just passed the ball, and he's cut in. Look, he's got ball side, gets the ball. I mean, somebody's got to foul him. It, it's it's lucky for Acadia that uh, Peter Morris was smart enough not to get involved in that. Vino, who also has four fouls against him, is back in. Dave Nutbrown has to rest Ted Byrne because the chances are very good that he's going to have to finish the game for one of Byrne. There's a great shot there by Dabney from outside. He scored most of his baskets from underneath, but that time he showed you a nice touch from well out. Carberry on the floor, McDonald lays it in. I was saying about Ted Byrne, four against McDonald, four against Morris. Byrne's going to be a key performer down the stretch for Dave Nutbrown. He's on the bench right now for a quick rest. Here's Robert Clark. Out to Bailey. 5.45 to play in regulation. Dominic works against Morris. Out to Bailey. Inside. And a nice basket by Whitney Dabney. Whitney Dabney. Oh, I'll tell you. I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that he's scored as well as he has or the fact that they've done such a good job getting the ball inside to him. That time the pass made the play. I, I couldn't believe that the guy would take that pass and then that he would get it through there. Here's Wayne Taylor to Carberry. To McDonald, inside, Vino cannot handle it, and it'll be Brandon Ball on the turnover. 69-62, 5 12 to play. Bailey directs the offense, gets it to Robert Clark. Dabney inside, there's Bajerski, and the foul is called. Against Carberry, I think. Well, he 
Hawks. That pass in again. See, they throw the ball in over, over people. It's a tough pass. It's not one that's a great percentage pass, but, God, they have done some job on it. And the fouls are almost automatic when that ball comes in there. Dave Nut Brown calls the timeout. We will take a break as well with 4.55 to play in regulation time. It's a nine-point game, 71-62. You ready? One, two, three, one. another timeout we'll come out with some more pressure but let's see if we can get in without going running jumping trapping in okay let's get some good possession put the ball in somebody's hands where he can score all right we run right hand right hand decision i mean it which, which is what coaching is all about dave nut brown would like to not go out and run and jump and put tremendous pressure on him yet because he's still got time in there if they can come back and play his comment is they scored three five points in a row can't allow that to have happen. He's going to be down 10 points here if he can shoot a foul. And he's got his five minutes. He, he, he's with, well within a decent time frame, but he's got to stop Brandon and get a little consistency in. I think he wants to see Morris with his ball a bit again. McDonald from outside. Brandon McDonald playing with four fouls, but he's making the most of the offensive opportunities. He, in particular, has helped to pick up some of the scoring slack in the second half because Mr. Carberry was just about all they had in the early going. Nice drive to the basket that time by Robert Clark. Peter Morris got absolutely hammered. And Clark got the basket. Cheap basket, boy, that Katie could have used to stop that time. Here's Carberry working against Bailey. Well, you see Brandon again making some decisions. Back in the zone, it's pretty aggressive, but I mean, they're not going to leave any chance of any rebounds. What they've got to be concerned about. Cheap baskets and the ball going inside. 74-66, Brandon leads by eight. Down to 3.50 to play in regulation time. Dabney outside to Dominique basket with a little under four minutes now and eight points you're in pretty good shape these guys score now you're hurting a little bit down to three on the shot clock Dominique from well out two baby Tough. ten point game 76 66 ball knocked away from Morris nice basket blocking call Morris is all finished. It's the play. Not much Peter can do. Tries to get there. Doesn't get the best angle. He's a little tired. He's been doing an awful lot of work out there. I mean, you've got to give credit to Brandon. They ran right at him. I mean, he didn't give him a chance to make any great decisions in that. It is on that note that a brilliant college career ends as Peter Morris fouls out with three minutes and 11 seconds to play in the national championship. Knock them down, we're flipping balls, we're all over the place. We go to the high post, run the cover through, let's get our zone offense and get some ball moving. We're just standing around right now. Let's make sure we run our offense. They stay in all right, okay, all right, let's go. Dave Nutbrown, plot strategy. This could, this could well be the end of Acadia's chances. And if they don't do something, because there's a very important player. Well, I'll tell you, two good athletes doing that, huh? 
That's such a tough play. But Peter, I mean, it was a good call. Peter had no chance of doing anything else. Clark cannot make the basket. There is the young man from Windsor, Nova Scotia. One of the new wave of talented players coming out of the Nova Scotia high school basketball scene. He's been a terrific talent, a two-time All-Canadian, including this year. And the player of the year for the second straight year in a row, all finished now as a collegiate player. And he's made a big contribution to Acadia basketball over the years. In the meantime, Taylor tries and misses. And the ball's controlled by the Bobcats. Now I think we're going to see some pressure and some fouls. And then we're going to have to see how well Brandon shoots fouls under pressure. Rozarski works it to the outside. Dominic back to Whitney Dabney. Work the clock down. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Clark has to come back out to Bailey. Five seconds on the shot clock. There's a free trip in. They're going to turn it over, and they do. And Patrick. But see, the, the 30 seconds and no shot is probably a better deal for Brandon than a quick shot that misses. So that they, they haven't lost as much as, you know, the crowd would let you think. It's. And that's not taking anything away from the good Acadia defense. Barbary finds the lane. Throws it out to Vino. Off the rim. Rebound. Controlled briefly by Ted Bird and then turned over to Acadia. And Bailey will slow the pace down. Dominic to Bailey. Outside to Bojarski, who's played a strong game. And now Wayne Taylor draws the foul with a minute and 52 the seconds left. And we get a timeout call by Acadia. Right. We've got to get into our zone offense and we've got to spot up at the three points. All right. But if we can get it inside quick and we've got a scoring chance, then we'll put it inside there, get it, get into four red right away. If we get a chance to double, we're going to double, all right? Most important thing, even if they get down to half court, if you can direct Bailey one side or the other, the man on that wing, as soon as you see him bring it, get out and jump, double, and we'll take the back side, all right? Everybody will take it. But don't play that big three stuff. we got to be in the same thing with you. You're in his face. We don't give a shit if they score back door now. We need the ball, guys. We've got 152. You've worked too damn hard to stop now. Let's go get it. Come on, guys. Back door is talking about playing too close to your man, have your man cut to the basket. But uh, that's not going to be a major factor in here. What he wants to do is run, do what they call a run and jump. Uh, as the man dribbles to you, you leave your man and attack him, and then everybody rotates towards that ball. Uh, Dave Nutbrand has made some other decisions in there. They want to take the outside shot. If they can go in, they'll go in. The problem is, without Mars, they, they, they've got less of a threat out there. See how it works out. The other problem documented in that statistic, Acadia is out of timeout. They may have. They may have one left, Peter. Talking to the referees before, they, they thought that they were giving them five timeouts despite the fact that there is a, a rule that when they're at television time, we'll find out soon because if he's got one, he's going to use it. Bojarski, one for two. McDonald with the rebound. Taylor with the basketball. Bailey playing tough defense. Seventy-seven, sixty-six. Eleven points. Brandon, a minute and 47 seconds away from winning its second national title. Eight times the Bobcats have been to the Nationals in the last decade. Last year, the first time they won it all. Run and jump. Let's see how it goes. Everybody's got a man trying to direct the ball. Bailey to Dominique. And knocked out of bounds by... Kevin Vino, 1.29 to play. Playing the clock now. McDonald fouls him. 
Good foul. Got well, it. Got they, foul. They may call it on Taylor. Grant McDonald fouls out of the game with a minute and 27 seconds left to play. And Grant McDonald draws an appreciative hand as he leaves with 14 points. Dave Nut Brown's challenge is to finish this game and put people in the lineup who can play with a very good hand inside. Come on, guys. And take the place of Grant McDonald and now Peter Morris. Out of Cole Harbor Collegiate in Dartmouth, Grant McDonald, another of the new young players coming out of the Nova Scotia High School scene made such a difference to Acadia basketball. They've got nothing to be ashamed of, and they still got some shots at this. A lot of fouls with, a, with uh, Brandon not making them can put them back in the game. Brandon makes their foul shots. It's all over for Acadia. That one hurts. When they go in clean, you can accept it. When it rolls in, when you, when you, you know, the Acadia coaching, you're looking for a mistake, and it rolls in, you're really annoyed. Twenty-nine points, I see, for Whitney Dabney. Here's Carberry off the rim. The rebound taken by Vino, and he goes up off the rim, off the rim, and in. Ted Byrne. One eleven to go. Dominic, nice pass inside, and it goes to Jebison. And it's hammered away by Ikegiani. He's at three-point range. They've got to get some shots. Taylor tries one off the rim. It's controlled by Bajarski. And Carberry commits his third foul. Acadia foul for Ron Carberry. His third. 79-68. Brandon by 11. 55 seconds left on the clock. Frank Wojcicki at line shooting one and one. 55 seconds means that should Brandon get the ball and hold it twice. Katie can only score two baskets, maximum. Bailey. Under pressure, gets it into the corner. It goes back outside, and Bailey controls. Looking for almost the four corners, spreading people out. One guy in the middle, kicks it outside, corner inside. For a team that's playing in its 48th game of the year, the Brandon Bobcats don't show a whole lot of signs of being really tired. They are 23 seconds away from their second straight national championship. Well, let me tell you, it's going to be like you and I, Peter, when we get down to Florida and we have that big meal down there. I don't care how tired you are, you're going to enjoy it. And that's where they are now. They're enjoying it. Gary Hemmings takes the time out. I think more to rest his people than anything else. Out of North Carolina, came to Brandon after two years as a player of Lakehead University. The year for a year has been the head coach at the Brandon Bobcats for the last 15 years. I think we're going to see some new players in here. That's a good reason to call a timeout. He wants to have some guys be able to say, let's see, let's see how many new faces we see out here. That some young players say, I played in the national championship. We get a rebound. Let's release that. There's a couple of dry uniforms coming out for this last 23 seconds. And yet he's still got Bailey in there to handle the ball just in case. From the outside, off the rim, rebound, controlled by Jebison. 
Out to Bailey. Long cross-court pass. And it goes out of bounds. And we've got 12 seconds left on the clock. Bailey with a steal. Courtney Bailey. Makes it 81 68. And the seconds tip off the clock. And the Brandon Bobcats are the champions of the CIAU for the second straight year. Start out here, Peter. I tell you, they just took control of the game in the second half, chased them out. Foul Foulsburg. Dave Nutt Brown was worried about him and hurt them. Two excellent teams, great championship game. There's the winning coach for the second straight year, Jerry Hemmings, going home to Brandon with the national trophy. And we'll have the presentation when we come back to Halifax in just a moment. Okay, here we are. What do we do? Okay. Okay, I got Jerry coming here now. Do you want him? Okay. Congratulations. Terrific. Basketball Championship of Canadian Interuniversity Athletic Union. With captains Courtney Bailey, Pat Jebison, and Frank Bojarski from the Brandon Bobcats, please come forward. present the CIAU banner which will be displayed in the home gym of Brandon. Would the captains come back for that please? Well, the, the players have been asked to come back and get the banner, but right now they're having a nice time carrying the McGee Trophy around the floor of this Metro Center in Halifax for the second straight year they won it. And the coach, Courtney Jerry Hemmings, has joined me. A very Bujarski satisfying victory. Maybe a little bit easier time getting here than Acadia had, but certainly you worked hard all the way through, and you had to work hard to beat the X-Men today. Peter, you're definitely right. You, you know, we got to give University of Acadia a lot of credit. Uh, they played a great basketball game last night. I, definitely they expended a lot of energy. And uh, I was real happy with our guys. I knew the game was going to come down to the backboards if we would rebound with them. And we did a good job of getting the basketball inside. And we put them in foul trouble. And all those things went our way. And pretty well all along, I thought we had good control. And it was a good way to win. And I'd like to just say hello to everybody back in Brandon. And uh, 
especially my wife, and I got a little boy, Jordan, and I know he's probably jumping up and down right now. I think there might be a little party in Brandon for the next day or two. I really thought the key was the fact you got the ball inside, and they weren't able to do as much damage physically, I think, to your big people. I know you were concerned about that after the semifinal, but I think that you got the ball inside so well, and Whitney made the most of it. Well, I thought Dabney played a great game. He'd been sick in our first game. He had a so-so game yesterday, but he came on strong today. He came ready to play. Uh, I think he's a lot quicker than a lot of people give him credit for. And uh, we had some kids come off the bench, Gary Laddie, uh, uh, Marvin Russell. Uh, these kids really did a good job putting the ball in there. And we got uh, just a great we, – we're a team. That's our 30 games in a row we've won. So, you know, we're thrilled about that too and that being a national championship. But we're a tight team. We have great balance. And we don't really stress any one individual. And great year to win it. Last year we won it with John Carson, which was great because it was his fifth year. Uh, this year a lot of people thought maybe we wouldn't be quite as good, and this team was out to prove something. Well, I think they proved it to you and to uh, their fans and to the people across the country who love this game. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, Jerry having a very happy and satisfied coach to the Brandon Bobcats, champions for the second straight year. We'll have more from the Metro Center when we come back after this.